Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I came across something I thought I would share with you guys uh, when I was just looking through my Facebook feed this morning, because there's a few people I follow, and Dr. Brad Schoenfeld is one of them. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Work on scaling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Yeah, he, he put up a chart, which I'll link in the video later, uh, along with a quote, which I'll flip in here for you guys. And uh, that's the thing with someone like Dr. Brad. A lot of people are like, well, why do you care about what this uh, scientist says? It's like, well, because the guy works out and he specializes in body composition and usually muscle hypertrophy. He does study after study after study on this. He's obsessed with what stimulates the most muscle growth. All right, and every muscle in the body, that's his area of expertise. Uh, and he does work with athletes. He does work with bodybuilders, other people. So this is someone who really, really puts all of his effort and PhD into understanding muscle growth, body composition, stuff like that. That's his obsession. That's his nerddom. Uh, and so, you know, he's someone who's in the field doing that. So his take on this stuff is always worth seeing. Okay. And he also does write a lot of material for a continuing education for personal trainer certificates and stuff like that. He's one of the guys trying to actually get all these trainers to understand how stuff really works. Makes him one of the good guys out there, honestly. I don't necessarily agree with all of his findings. I agree with what he's saying oftentimes, but the thing is sometimes his conclusions aren't necessary for all people, and that's kind of the point. Uh, now, he was talking a little bit about fat loss and different diets, and he linked a little chart. And what he was saying in his uh, quote there, for those who read it, is that, you know, a lot of people worry about low carb versus low fat, which one seems to work. And he points out, you know, it seems to be very, very clear that there's no metabolic advantage based on the studies. Most studies favor low fat diets seem to usually get better fat loss in the vast majority of studies. You get a few exceptions, uh, but there's different variables in play. Um, but generally, if there's going to be a metabolic advantage, it seems to be towards higher carb and lower fat, although it's so small, that's what he points out, it's so small that it probably isn't that big of a deal. All right, it's there, but it's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. But that is where the metabolic advantage lays, meaning if you ate equal calories, you would probably lose fat slightly faster, slightly faster on a uh, higher carb, lower fat diet than you would on the reverse, on the high fat, low carb diet, like a ketogenic diet, okay? What he notes, what he notes is that obviously higher protein intake does always seem to be the best, meaning people generally lose the most fat and retain the most muscle, so they end up with the best body composition when protein is kept relatively high. Now, what he points out in there is that people need to understand, and this is something people need to grasp in the fitness community, what he's talking about very high protein is probably lower than a lot of you think because people have been so misled by the bodybuilding world, the supplement industry, everything, that they're honestly thinking, whoa, high protein, that must mean like 300 grams a day. No, he says high protein, which is, again, what he recommends. This is higher than, um, you know, is recommended to the average person. The average person out there doesn't need anywhere near this much protein even to gain muscle. But he's talking about for ideal fat loss, eating around 2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So how much is that? Let's say you weigh 220 pounds. That's about 200 grams of protein. Because 220 pounds is 100 kilos. 2 times 100 is 200. All right? That's what we're talking about. For a pretty good-sized person, a little over 200 pounds, 200 grams of protein. That's still less than the often recommended one gram per pound of body weight out there in the bodybuilding world, okay? It's still slightly less than that. It's about 10% less than that. But that is a very high protein intake. So people misunderstand these things. When someone says high protein, a much higher protein diet, and that falls well within what I tell people. 1.6 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is what most of the top experts recommend for athletes athletes who are trying to lose fat while holding on to their muscle, okay? And he's uh, recommending basically the upper threshold of that, the upper end of that. Why? It preserves muscle and it has good satiety. People who consume heavier amounts of protein up in that sort of range, and again, that's not 1.5 grams per pound of body weight and stuff. You know, you were to do what a lot of these people will tell you to do out there, a lot of bodybuilders are calling higher protein, would be something like, 330, 340 grams, not 200 for someone of that same weight. So it's important that we distinguish the difference here of what an expert like this is talking when he says high protein. It's not 
what a lot of people out there are thinking of. But by that same token, it's also not what these vegans are saying that, oh, you don't need any protein. 50, 60 grams of protein will preserve muscle. Your carbs are high enough. That's, that's not true either. Now, carbs are very muscle preserving. They're more muscle preserving than fat. That's what all the data shows too. People on higher carb diets usually retain muscle better if protein is equal. All right. If you compare a high carb versus a high fat diet with equal protein, usually people retain muscle slightly better and perform slightly better on the higher carb one, not the higher fat. All right. But that's when protein is equal. Uh, and that beyond a certain threshold, protein can start to become less important than carbs as far as maintaining performance, because maintaining performance is a big part of maintaining muscle mass and losing body fat. It's an enormous component, and we can't forget that. But what's interesting, you know, is the trends that he's pointing out is that obviously high protein is your high priority. No matter what diet you choose, high protein seems to be the, the priority. So even the idea of these ketogenic diets, they don't even get it right, right? And keto is becoming popular again because a few different YouTubers out there promoting it as, as if it's some magical key to getting ripped and it's not. You guys have seen me do a ketogenic diet for a year straight, right? Did I get ripped? No. Uh, and in my experience, I perform better on a higher carb diet. I'm done messing with the keto stuff. A long time ago, the evidence is just is what it is. Now, I don't think ketogenic diets are particularly dangerous the way they've been made out to be, but are they as healthy as a higher carb, lower fat diet? Probably not. And that's what we've got to factor in. All right, if you've got a diet that causes you to lose slightly less body fat when all things are equal and doesn't give you quite as pretty and healthy a blood work as a different type of diet. You really got to rethink that. Is this really what we need to be doing in the fitness world? Is this what we need to be promoting? Probably not. Probably not. And, uh, you know, and these are the top experts out there in body composition even saying, well, you know, high protein is king, but obviously you're not eating an all protein diet because a lot of us are losing weight on a lot of calories. Like uh, I'm down 18 pounds. And, uh, just from increasing my physical activity and stuff a lot, but I'm not eating a, a 2,500 calorie diet, guys. I'm not down there eating a really low calorie diet. And a lot of people aren't either. A lot of people are losing weight on 2,500 calories. Well, they weigh whatever, and they're getting 200 grams of protein, which is what he's recommending. That's what, 800 calories? On a 2,000 calorie diet, that's only 40% of your calories. It's less than that. It's down in the 30s if you're on a 2,500 calorie diet down around 30 percent you've got to fill your your food with something else you've got to eat something else and what the general consensus shows is that filling those remaining calories in that other what 60 to 70 percent of your calories with higher carbs usually leads to slightly better a tiny amount better fat loss usually leads to better muscle retention um, and usually leads to better athletic performance, at least for higher intensity activities. Now, a lot of marathon runners can do just fine on ketogenic diets. A lot of endurance athletes perform amazingly well on really high fat diets. But that's because at a certain threshold, these people are burning through so many calories that unless they're consuming extra carbs mid-training all the time, they're just simply not getting enough fuel. So they'd be having to tap into their body fat stores. And that's the difference. People need to understand endurance athletes aren't really doing endurance competitively in order to lose fat. Right? That's not their goal. They're not trying to lose the little bit of body fat they have left. They're trying to fuel their, their endurance performance. So big difference there. And that's people get that mixed up when we're talking about athletes. Most of you guys aren't doing four to six hours of endurance work every day. Um, different animals. So don't get those confused when you have De Jeff Olczyk and other researchers in that area talking about endurance athletes. So the general consensus, and even Dr. Brad shows this, is that high protein, your highest priority during fat loss, highest priority for satiety reasons, for uh, muscle preservation reasons, but if you're going to have to fill the calories with something else, carbohydrates usually work a little bit better. Uh, it kind of means the ketogenic diets really aren't that great for body composition. The people who are promoting them as being so are generally putting a hefty dose of gear in the mix to pull it off. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.